Welcome back to C-Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're going to learn some of the more common math functions. So this video is going to be quick and work a little bit differently than the other videos because instead of writing logic ourselves, I'm going to walk you through some of the more common functions in the math class. The math class is a good tool to have because a lot of times you'll need a simple math function and you want it to be nice and easily readable and not have to reinvent the wheel. Also, if you're going in for an interview, interviewers love giving problems based around math, and if you know the built-in functions, it's probably going to look good for you. So the first two functions are the min and max function, and they find the lowest or highest value between two given values. Now you can pass ints and get back an int, or you can pass doubles and get back a double. So if I change that to a double, I can get the maximum double out of two doubles as well. While these functions would be pretty easy to write yourself, they save you a few lines of code and they read nice and concisely. Next up we have rounding, and rounding works a little strangely in C Sharp because the default behavior is if it's halfway between, it always rounds toward the even integer. So if you say round the number nine and a half, it's going to round up to 10 because that's an even integer. But if you say round 10 and a half, it's going to round it down to 10 because rounding up to 11 would be an odd integer, so it would round it down to the even 10. Now, of course, if the number you pass to round is not directly in the middle at 0.5, say, for example, we wanted to round 10.4, that would go to 10. And if we wanted to round 10.51, that would go to 11. The round function also lets you pass additional parameters. So say we wanted to round 10.51234 to three decimal points of precision. We could specify the int amount of digits as our second parameter. And what that would do is it would round to this position. So three in this position would round down and our result would be 10.512. You can also add a parameter to define the rounding mode. So we talked about the default being that it rounds toward the nearest even integer. But say we wanted 10.5 or any number we gave here to round up if it was 0.5. To do that, we could say midpoint rounding period and specify away from zero, which is the strategy of rounding to the nearest number. And when it is halfway between the two, it's rounded up away from zero. So then, 10.5 would round to 11. So if you're ever working in code and you're getting weird rounding errors, go and check your midpoint rounding mode because there's a fair chance that that's your problem. Next up, we have floor and ceiling, which are both rounding, but floor forces a round down and ceiling forces a round up. These functions come in handy a lot in programming because oftentimes you can't have a piece of something. Say, for example, you wanted to figure out how many chairs you could fit in a room, and you came out to 4.9 chairs. Well, five chairs wouldn't fit, so you would need to floor the number and buy four chairs. Same with ceiling, as if you were trying to figure out how many people you needed to buy food for, and you came up with 4.2 people, well, that, that doesn't exist, so you would need to buy food for five people, so you would need to use ceiling. The rest of the functions are pretty self-explanatory, but definitely good to know they exist in case you have to do math. You have the trigonometric functions like sine and cosine. Then you have other basic math functions like getting the square root of something, raising something to a power like two to the three would be two times two times two equals eight, and being able to get the absolute value of a number. Now there are several other functions in the math class, and if you want to look at them, you can do math dot and let your IntelliSense menu come up. You can scroll through to see what's available. And if you click and hover, it will give you a description of what they do. So there's things like logarithms, magnitudes, reciprocals, truncation, but I just wanted to show the most commonly used functions so you'll be aware of them when you need them. Next up, we're going to talk about the random class and how we can use it to generate random numbers. So thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. I hope this is helpful. Happy coding, and until next time, as always, take care.